this is a note about plotting a, a bearing. Uh, no, actually a danger bearing, a danger bearing. Um, I'm doing this on an e-chart program, uh, but uh, this is uh, the uh, illustrate the, pro the process uh, is the same. You'll see if you're doing it just on paper. And uh, this is from um, related to lesson six uh, quiz uh, question number seven for our online course. And so here we are, have a DR position down here somewhere, and we want to, this is our intended route to go up to here. And then, uh, but we have heard that uh, by the news or radio uh, broad, uh, broadcast notice to Mariners, uh, that there is a uncharted uh, or a wreck here on this uh, bank right here like that. And let's say it's foggy. It's foggy. We can't uh, see. And we also are assuming we have no GPS. So we're, we're back doing standard old-fashioned piloting methods. And uh, we assume we can see this light. That's a seven-mile light. Um, and at 37 feet, and we're at eight feet, and you know this is just a, this is like two, four, we're only about five miles off. So this light's going to be visible, you know, in some um, some low level of fog. And um, so we see the light, and that's our guide to get us in here. But at the same time, we're wa we we suspect that there's current going this, uh, flowing this way. So the idea is we just want to have a backup. A backup method as we drive in here to confirm that we're not getting set onto this wreck here. And uh, we put a safety margin here. Now, you do this with a paper chart with your dividers, but here uh, we would just go in here and I put a ring around the mark at a quarter of a mile. So this is a quarter of a mile off this, this red line is a quarter of a mile off where we think the wreck is, right here. And so, and so we're going to drive in. The only thing we have to look at is this for now. We have no GPS going with little trails or positions or anything. So what we would do then is go up here and take a bearing to this light. So I'm going to put this here right on the light, the broachy ledge light. And then here's our danger bearing, and that's going to be right here, right along there. So you see now that's a bearing um, like 327. So our route in there, we're going to be steering something like 330. And uh, this is a uh, bearing to that light is 327. So when we're out here, you know, when we're out here coming in, towards this light let's say when we're you know we're coming in here the bearing to this 327 here let me I'm just going to go ahead and we don't want this bearing to be any less than 327 you see if I'm out here let's say I drift I drift out here then now that's 322 320 315 and so forth so you can you can think about this. This is 327, and then just think about your clock. Over here is 270. So these bearings, you know, as you go up here, the bearing goes down this way. So we don't want this to be, we want this to be safe. We want the bearing to this to be no less than uh, uh, 327. So I could go in here and just for now, I'll just mark this as a danger bearing, no less than uh, 327 M. Okay, that's okay. Now I've just done that, say, on my paper chart. I just draw that line in, and um, I don't want over here. So then as you proceed in, you can just watch the bearing to that light. For example, here, if I'm over, let me see if I can drag that and actually read it. Yeah, so here's here's the 327. I don't want less than that. But over here, you see I'm 330. When I start in, if I have no current, if I have no current at all, I would, I would be coming in here, reading that would be 337, 336, 330, you know, and so forth. 
and, and so forth. Then up here, I can notice it. You know, I can mark by the time I get to 340, I'm well past this thing. But the idea is, as I'm going in and watch this, what I don't want to see is as I drift, drift in here, there's 320, 336, 335, 334. See, it's going down, down, down. And here's 327. That's my marker. I don't want to go any less than that. I'm in trouble. So what you would do in a case like that is you would start in, and if the bearing you know, seems to be fine, you might even go a little wide depending on that. But, but anyway, let's say you go straight in and you just watch this light. You watch that light. And if this, and if this bearing starts slipping down, getting smaller and smaller like that, that means you're getting pushed this way and you've got to turn to the left and come out. You don't want that bearing to ever be less than uh, 327. And so in the end, you, you might have a chart plot that then looks something like this as you start your, as you start your uh, voyage into the, into the harbor there. Okay, so that's, a, that's a, uh, the concept of a danger bearing. It has lots of applications. Sometimes you'll have one on each side. I don't want it less than this. I don't want it more than that. You know, you know you're going in a channel. This technique is, is important to remember if you don't have a GPS, it's tracking your position. And it also works best when you have a bright light or some prominent landmark that you can watch the bearing to that's more or less uh, dead ahead of where you're going. That's, the, that's, where this, that's where this technique comes into play.